Hello, Juwan Buford, founder of JSB Business Solutions Group, co-founder of Next Op Social, and PPLSI entrepreneur. And you know, there are two topics I'm going to talk about today. The first being the ideal of recruiting and building a sales team. And I thought it was, uh, I had a fascinating conversation a couple days ago with one of my business partners, and she shared consternation that choose experience when it comes to actually going out into the field and talking to individuals about her business and sharing information about the opportunity to partner or work with her and I thought it was curious um, you know she works a job um, and she also of course has her business she builds on the side and the question I asked her was simply this you know her does her is her employer a for-profit business and I guess a nonprofit for-profit it wouldn't matter but I asked her is your employer for a profit business? She says, yes, it is. And I said, great. And I said, is your employer currently hiring? She says, yeah. And she told me about the job they're hiring for. And matter of fact, she proceeded to share with me how several other departments um, at the company where she works at was hiring as well. And I said, hmm. So let me ask you a question. Do you think Starbucks is hiring right now? She says, yeah. And I said, do you think Myers is hiring right now? She says, yeah. And do you think most of the companies that you shop at whether it be for food, clothing, or anything else, is hiring. She says, yeah. And I said, fascinating. So you realize that organizations, teams, sports, athletics, um, the orchestra, um, fast food places, restaurants, factories, et cetera, et cetera, are always hiring. And even small business owners, small mom and pops are always hiring. She says, yeah. And I said, do you understand the disconnect here? You aspire to be a business owner, but you don't want to do, like, in my mind, the second most important thing a business owner can do. Right? If you're the CEO of a company or the founder of a company, of course, the number one thing you're doing every single day is making sure that more people know about your business today than tomorrow. But the other major responsibility you have to the business is to go out and find and attract the best talents you can find to build and scale your business. Right? That's how you create more viability. And at the end of the day, it's just like sports teams. Sports teams who tend to have the most talented individuals on the team tend to win. There's no really getting around that. There are exceptions, of course. But for the most part, the teams that have the greatest amount of talent tend to win, right? Um, it's no different than in business. Nine times out of 10, maybe nine times out of 10, no, not maybe, nine times out of 10, you take two business owners who are across the street from each other, offering the same products and services, um, providing the same, let's say, quote unquote, um, level of service in terms of principles and values, oftentimes what's going to determine the success of one versus the other is just how talented the staff is, who does a better job of finding individuals to deliver the services or products more effectively. It's no different than as a business owner. You know, for me, as I was listening to her, it was like, it was one of those things where Oftentimes, individuals who start a business are afraid to go out and market their business, let people know what it is they're doing, right? They'll share information all day long. They'll share information about the last movie they watched, the last book, on the last plate they enjoyed, the last resort they attended, the last whatever, um, and readily, <laughs> readily help somebody else build their business. Nothing wrong with that. But then get shy, right? Become, I don't know, a secret agent, <laughs> if you will, when it comes to their own business endeavors. And it's no different here when we talk about the ideal of growing your business. The bottom line is in order to scale, unless you want to be a solopreneur all of your life, unless you want to be a micro business owner all your life, which basically means the majority of time, um, regardless of industry with rare exception, that in order for your business to be viable and generate income, you have to wake up in the morning and go to work. And you're going to be wearing a million different hats in that process. So. The bottom line is if you don't wake up one day, the income stops. Sounds kind of like a job to me, right? Oftentimes, that's kind of what it is. You just created your, a job for yourself. But I would like to think the ideal is to create a business, right? To create an entrepreneur endeavor, an enterprise that at some point begins to develop like a child does. It begins to develop organs and systems, right? To begin to operate independently of you. It begins to mature psychologically and mentally to operate independently of you. So you don't have to get up and be responsible for everything that transpires in the business from sun up to sundown, right? Part of starting up a business, I would like to think for most individuals, is about curating a, a, a life of purpose where you don't have to wake up in the morning 
and trade your time for money, right? So you spend more time doing the things you feel like you've been purposed to do as opposed to things you feel like you have to do to earn income. And if you're fortunate, I know I'm very fortunate since to every business that I'm involved in, I love doing it, right? But it's still work. The ideal that somehow, you know, you find something you love, there's never any work involved. You can miss me with that. No, there's work. Um, but I do enjoy everything I'm doing. I enjoy waking up, but there are certain aspects of what it is that I do that I don't necessarily enjoy. And I want to automate those things. I want to make those things systemic, right? So I can also do other things that I enjoy, right? So that being said, I wanted to kind of touch that here briefly. I thought it was important because I've had the conversation actually a couple times this week. You know how I do it. If a topic keeps coming up repeatedly over and over again, I feel like the universe is compelling me to talk about it. So, all right. The other thing I want to talk about today, aside from this ideal and mindset of um, having a, a, a disaffinity, if you will, to building your business, um, is this ideal that I've heard one too many times today that, you know, I wish I would start a business because if I start a business, I wouldn't have to work. Like, and literally I've had this conversation transpire two or three different times. And, you know, it's embedded in a mindset that somehow the rich don't work, that somehow um, they're just endowed with money, <laughs> that somehow they're endowed with wealth. And, and the thing about them is nothing to be further the truth. Unless you're born on third base, you're going to work. Matter of fact, you're going to work even harder than the average Joe. In business, oftentimes, you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of energy and effort doing things. Matter of fact, in the beginning, you don't even get paid for it. So later on, assuming you're building systemically, you're building operations, you're acquiring talent, um, you're scaling your influence and your mission and purpose. So later on, you can get compensated for things you no longer have to do. But this ideal that somehow I want to be rich because there's no work there, stop it. It's like the same attitude that people exhibit when they talk about the ideal of, um, you know, I want to um, start a business, but I don't want a boss. <laughs> Look, when you start a business, you've increased the accountability because not only are you accountable to your clients, not only are you accountable to your staff, not only are you accountable to your vendors, not only are you accountable to your family, not only are you accountable to yourself, you have accountability all around you. Matter of fact, you take on multiple bosses. If you're starting a business to get away from a boss or to get away from work, man, you better find a, I don't know, a low wage job where, you know, you can sit down somewhere and just kind of chillax, if you will, and you know, collect enough to scrape by, but if you're trying to start up an entrepreneur endeavor and you're trying to get away from work and responsibility, you know, for a rude awakening. And I just believe it was a conversation that needed to be had because I've heard this narrative so many different times. Um, it's just not true. And yeah, the work is, there's greater responsibility, there's greater accountability, there's greater responsibility. Yeah, I said that twice. Um, you're going to work more, but the rewards are greater. And you know that can't be dismissed either. The accoutrement of success is the freedom. The accoutrement of success is you do curate your lifestyle. The accoutrement of success is you can make an impact in the world of your choosing, right? You can choose what you want to do. You can choose how you serve, and you can choose who you serve. And that's one of the greatest benefits of entrepreneurship, right? Um, you can empower people with entrepreneur as an entrepreneur, right? You can. That's why I call, why I say repeatedly, entrepreneurship is empowerment, right? You can employ your family, you can employ your friends, you can employ your neighborhood and your community. You can take control of what happens at your kitchen table as opposed to just being up in the air and, you know, where someone else who, quite frankly, doesn't live your life, doesn't wake up with the stresses you wake up with, determining when you take your vacations, determining how much time you spend in your family, determining the extent to which you can spend time in your purpose. Um, and you can also, of course, have a huge impact in your community, where as, as opposed to people outside your community who, once again, may not live in your community, whose imperatives and desires may not be congruent with what's best for your community and your neighborhood. Well, look, if you're the employer, you get to dictate the terms. You get to dictate what type of institution or business sits on the corner of the block you live in, whether it's a liquor store, whether or not it's a uplift center or some type of rec center, right, or something that's more positive that contributed contributes more so to the health and wellness of the community. So, you know, that's a conversation that was like top of mind as I'm in between appointments and sipping on coffee and reflecting and working and all that other fun stuff, getting my entrepreneurship on. Hope this serves you. Celebrate success in advance. Goodbye for now.